Time for the This Is How We Do It section in our program. We'll talk about the mental health helpline from intervention to psychotherapy for business. Here to talk to us about it, Tadeusz Reimus. Hello, Tadeusz. Can you see me? Hear me? Hello, Lukasz. I can see you. It's really nice to see you. Hello, everyone. Great to have you with us. Hi. Yeah. We have a very, <laughs> I'm very we have happy. A, yeah, you, you run this project, mhhelpline.com. And if I understand it correctly, you had scheduled and planned this project for launch in June this year. But given the circumstances, the lockdown and the coronavirus situation that really started for Poland in March, uh, you decided to pre-schedule the launch for various reasons. Can you tell me about those reasons? Why? Well, the Mental Health Helpline, uh, it's the safe and professional place for psychological support. So uh, with the team, we wanted to give the best support uh, from the psychologists, psychotherapists, interventionists and psychiatrists for our uh, clients. And yeah, we wanted to uh, kick off this project on the holidays, but then pandemic happened and our clients were asking us to uh, speed up the project because the, the employees were uh, struggling with the depression, anxiety attacks. And I think everyone here who is listening knows uh, that, that there were hard times. So uh, from this time, Mental Health Helpline is providing uh, psychological support in a technology that is available uh, pretty fast in 48 hours uh, it, and our clients. Fair? Yeah. Tadeusz, is it fair to say that the actual demand uh, for those services increased dramatically or if you were to quantify it, what kind of increase are we talking about? Well, you know, the WHO organization is saying that the depression rises uh, for about uh, from 5% to 15 or even th so three times. Uh, we have the, our statistics that the, uh, in, during the times of the peace, let's say, uh, from uh, the, like the, the, the number of employees who need to have some kind of psychological support is about two to five percent. But I'm talking about times of peace. In times of pandemia now, we we observe that it, it is even 20 to 30 percent from one of our clients. But I, I think it's like, figure. yeah, that's that's the huge because it, like you know people are isolated, are feeling uh, lonely, depressed, but they have uh, much more uh, exposure for a crisis. For example, they are worried, worried about their seniors, about the health problems, about children, and they are pretty much alone. And on top of that, uh... On top of that, depression is one of those challenges that have for years been largely undetected for, for a huge number of cases. So can you tell us more about how these estimates are created and by whom? I mean, you've mentioned the WHO uh, projections, but... Well, there are different types of depression, obviously, but uh, when, when I'm... I will talk as a consultant and as a psychotherapist that uh, if you have uh, these general symptoms such as uh, um, uh, uh, you do not feel any um, satisfaction, you have mood disorders, let's say that you are pretty much on the low level of your activity and uh, you have like sleep deprivation or you sleep too much or, to, or, or, or uh, less, that if you have this kind of symptoms in about three weeks, uh, it, it is safe to, uh, to search for some kind of diagnosis and professional care because uh, it means that your body, your organism is saying something important for you and uh, maybe Absolutely. it is time to take care of yourself. Tadeusz, which brings us to the helpline as, a, as one of the proposed solutions for big organizations. When first introducing this idea, you mentioned it's both safe and professional. 
I have absolutely no doubt about the professional part, but I think it's also important that we say why you use the word safe. Well, we have the medical law as a company uh, on our backs, so we wanted to be uh, safe in the legal way and in the IT technological way. So uh, all the uh, uh, consultants uh, sees are encrypted and uh, employees who want to speak with the mental health professional uh, are just like anonymous in, in a sense that even yeah. HR, even we do not know uh, if the, uh, they, their personal data, they uh, mm -hmm. only have to make some kind of um, uh, announcement and, and do the address in our pl platform and afterwards they are just as safe as they can be in, via internet. And we so have all the legal and technological uh, certificates. Yeah. So you're following all the legal guidelines and regulations regarding confidentiality. And I presume the stream itself is encrypted and it's not being recorded. Is that the case? Yeah, it is not recorded and it is not uh, uh, like employee cannot ask us uh, for the personal data of the of the um, uh, of the employers it's Which outside party that, that is taking care of the uh, that is taking care of the all the personal data depression itself is a huge topic these days and likely to become even bigger but i think it's been a social taboo people get stigmatized for it within organizations sometimes even. So I suppose what you're talking about, the safety, security aspects are extremely important on a purely emotional level for a lot of people, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But uh, I think that's one of the, um, one of the um, few positives in pandemia that the depression or anxiety disorders or mental health in general is uh, not taboo as much as it was uh, because the other thing, uh, excuse me <laughs> and the other thing Tadeusz now that I think about it there is a certain positive irony to it as well because one of the reasons uh, why many people would not physically go to a psychotherapy session is because they would not like to be seen entering a physical building if you like and literally you know, attending the place where they sit in a queue or wait for and, and someone can see them in this potentially embarrassing as they see it situation. And with the technologies available today and encrypted streams and direct consultation, did, that eliminates at least one important obstacle, doesn't it? Yeah, well, exactly, Lukas. As, as you were saying, it's the we are observing like increasing the uh, um, number of patients and clients because the, 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 the there was this kind kind of barrier of the be feeling ashamed or not uh, asking for help it's actually easier for some of course of the of, of our patient to get the professional help or at least to diagnose if the problem is in the mental health uh, area or not so it's it's it should be mental health should be treated exactly as physical health so if you uh, feel uh, yeah tell me please uh, i would imagine that it doesn't necessarily take a pandemic like covid19 for there to be a professional uh, mental health helpline that people are familiar with so i would imagine your project comes uh, to a list, it's, it's added to an already existing list of mental health solutions out there. Please tell me it's true that you're not the first one or not one of the first ones. Uh, here in online, uh, we are one of the first ones. <laughs> really? <laughs> really, yeah, it is. Because, you know, we are, we are, um, uh, we have this um, idea that employee should uh, choose a mental health professional by face and by name. Uh, 
Uh, that's yes. the exact idea of the mental health helpline that you can see with whom you are speaking in 48 Absolutely. hours. Yeah, because you know, like before, if uh, companies have uh, employee assistance program, uh, they have actually some kind of anonymous uh, voice in the in the set phone. Uh, of course, it is important, but uh, well, our idea, my idea was to uh, have like the, the exact support as you are uh, uh, having in the uh, psychotherapy sessions or in even in psychi uh, psychiatric hospital that you actually can see and be as safe as it can be uh, in technology. So in this uh, case, we are one of the first, if not the first uh, institution who is stressing this personal relationship. Tadeusz and you can check it all. <laughs> if you if, yeah, if will, you want. I will definitely. I will definitely. <laughs> uh, Tadeusz, we're living in the 21st century, which is where people spend time researching uh, if they want to buy a new pair of socks. They read opinions. They, they read all the background. So it's only proper that we give them choice when it comes to something as intimate as psychotherapy. Uh, that that's the kind of service, if you like, that I would imagine everyone likes to know more about their uh, psychotherapist long before they have the first encounter. It's a very intimate uh, thing yeah. to, to yeah, yeah, trust sure. to begin with. So tell me, because this conference is essentially about diversity, inclusion, values, equity. Is it fair to say that a big multinational company cannot really talk about diversity and inclusion if they don't have a sound mental health policy? Is it a fair statement or is it exaggerated? No, oh, it's not exaggerated at all. It's the it's it's the truth. You know, the um, mental health problems are uh, so much um, apparent in the business and in the corporate uh, or, and not corporate organizations. That the uh, the, th the thing is that if you want to cope with some kind of crisis, you need to take care of your mental health or you need to just focus how uh, healthy, mentally uh, organized are your employees. And the younger they are, the more important it is for them. Uh, there, are, uh, there are some uh, research that uh, from the generation of the, uh, let's say, millennials and, uh, and youngers, uh, the reason they are changing the jobs is like from 50 to 75 percent via mental health issues and it's like the really? huge uh, number yeah so it it's safe really to big, say right? that if you do not uh, yeah it's safe to say that if you don't uh, um, take care of your mental health you will cease to exist as an organization <laughs> but yeah you can well, you can just like focus on that we all know that when it comes to mental health, it's not like catching a virus to diagnose properly uh, what started a given mental problem in an individual. You need to take a look at a very complex set of factors sometimes. And I would imagine uh, sometimes these factors can be reduced to an in-company situation and a set of circumstances that accelerated a mental health situation because of what was happening at work almost exclusively. Sometimes it comes completely from outside experience, someone's family background, uh, traumatic experiences in that private life situation. And sometimes it's a really sophisticated, complex, very difficult to untangle set of both worlds. That would be the case. So my question is, what's the organizational view on mental health? Uh, it's, it's a very generic question, I understand that. But is there, is there a trend? Do organizations have a certain perspective on not only accountability, but creating a systemic solutions for mental health? Well, there are like different levels of taking responsibility of mental health. And some of our clients are pretty much, you know, the pioneer of uh, taking the responsibility. Uh, but, but you know, like wor work in general is good for mental health. Uh, and actually, as you were saying, uh, that uh, in the workplace, uh, uh, you will see that something is wrong at uh, the, the first place, not in your home. 
you have to mob mobilize yourself to work. So your boss will will see that something is wrong, maybe even before your uh, spouse on, or, or your kids or your family. Uh, sure. But uh, yeah, and, and and that's that's why we wanted to help uh, as uh, fast as possible in in our helpline. But the, the other thing yes. is that negative working environment can lead to some kind of physical and, and mental uh, health problems. And that's the other part. Can we take it to a, to a level of a specific example? If you were to advise uh, companies how to cope with, with their in-company crises, what steps are priorities for them? Mm. Well, from my point of view, like implementation and some kind of enforcement of health and safety policies and practices. Uh, for example, like uh, identification of distress, like uh, providing some kind of uh, um, uh, support is crucial. Uh, informing your people, your staff, that uh, some kind of support is available and some is not. Uh, or, or, or organizations Which? should just like make programs for for the psychological um, first aid, let's say, to, to, to ensure that your supervisor will uh, for example, uh, know how to um, have this conversation uh, of with the diagnosis uh, goal and with the supportive goal. It is the competence that can and should be um, should be uh, trained. Um, like you need to recognize the the rewards it's itself that you taking care of your mental health and work-life balance because it makes your organization stronger and more much more dynamic uh, and which, uh, yeah which mm -hmm. clearly mm -hmm. shows us that it's a it clearly shows us today that it's a very big topic very broad lots of legislation regulations and best practice involved but could you please can we try and narrow it down a little to specific client solutions that you have been impressed by because obviously one thing to do is to uh, establish a systemic link with either an organization or a helpline like yours but can you think of maybe three examples of best practice that you as a psychotherapy professional have been really impressed by actually on the market yeah uh, well uh, our clients have a lot of best practices so one of our clients uh, just uh, uh, wanted to train like everyone exactly everyone from the first psychological aid and uh, th there were like thousands of people and hundreds of trainings conducted and actually they did a pretty good job because like uh, in this organization, a huge, a huge uh, global corporate business, uh, we have the information that uh, these kind of conversations are just like on a weekly basis. How do you feel? What can I do uh, to make you feel better when, when the, your supervisor is just like putting you uh, at the exact spot? that uh, he or she uh, is seeing that you don't seem like yourself are you okay you're taking care empathically um, of your employees and it creates a huge cultural change in the all the management and i think it's one of the best practice that th they are able and they have the competencies of the first mental health help uh, and support and making this kind of conversation. The second one, I'm pretty impressed uh, of one of our clients, uh, maybe to how they react on the time of crisis. For example, when someone died in the accident or uh, the employee miscarried or uh, uh, the, the parent of one of the employees uh, sick in coronavirus. So, so we have this client who has very strict policy what uh, support will be like 
and what should managers do what should uh, employees uh, employees do if, if they should ask or not for the death or for the for the some kind of crisis and um, we had this procedure of coming back from the depression episode to uh, to work and uh, very few companies even thought about uh, this kind of this kind of uh, um, uh, treatment and support and one of our companies will just say Mon and on monthly basis, the half a year is uh, a good time to uh, take back and uh, and uh, support the, uh, the employee who, who is depressed. Uh, the third, uh, th th third stuff, I think it's a very best practice to educate, educate and educate via webinars here, via consultancy. And uh, one of our clients just uh, have this, uh, this um, um, uh, idea that they should provide all the support they can give, including very long psychotherapy process if someone needs it. So I'm a psychotherapist, so I know that for, uh, 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 the treatment in psychotherapy can be even three years or four years or five years. So one of our clients are saying just like, oh, okay, that's enough. We, uh, we have so much importance in our, uh, in our uh, employees that we will pay for that, not because someone is uh, forcing us, but we want to uh, really pinpoint these mental health problems. And the idea is that if someone is taking care of themselves one hour a week, it, he or she will be a better, uh, employee, and it is the case that that the the, the long uh, process can be uh, paid by by the company, and I'm pretty impressed by that and respect that. Of course, not uh, uh, not company. Yeah, these are I can really talk about it all the time, as you can see. Wonderful, <laughs> because, wonderful. Unfortunately, you know, we have certain time limitations, and yeah. I'm only. <laughs> Uh, left with enough time to ask you a yes or no question. But what you're telling yeah. me is actually very positive news because for years, especially people on the outside, people who only have stereotypes about big corporate multinationals, they think these are profit-centric, profit maximization, productivity-focused organizations. And what you're saying really tells me that if these things are emerging into positive trends, we are starting slowly and gradually perhaps, but definitely as a trend, to live in the age where values, real values, not on paper values, are beginning, are beginning to matter for, for corporate ecosystems more and more. Establishing long-term reputation, long-term values for the company, which is not just, you know, as I said, on glossy paper, but something more to it. There is more sense that uh, once you become an employee, uh, you're part of something more important, part of something broader. And it's not that when you have difficulties, where you're going through psychological stress, we will abandon you and ask you to go because you're not meeting the KPIs any longer, right? So it's a very different world, isn't it? Yeah, it is, you know, that uh, uh, exactly what you are saying is that money doesn't buy happiness. It's not that quite simple. Mazi doesn't buy any satisfaction if you if you, you if you are in the form of some of psychologists uh, who can say like hedonic treadmill. You will never feel you have enough. You 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 have the business. You, uh, that's that's uh, when I uh, as I understand you that you need to focus on your satisfaction on your values of something deeper, not on money itself, but what it can be um, uh, bought and uh, that the, the, there's the lasting value of relations of people, of your employees. And yeah, that's the, that's the positive trend, I would say, that, uh, that we need to focus not on the KPIs, but on the, uh, of, of that, how much satisfaction I can have from my work, from my relationship, and from Which? my uh, meaning uh, area of the of my work. So yeah, I'm really happy that it is like that.
And all of the above uh, are likely to influence KPIs, productivities, and all the aspects that matter for a company to be also successful in the market. Tadeusz, I couldn't hope for a more positive closing to our discussion. Thank you for finding the time, and it's been wonderful to talk to you. Thank you once again. Thank you once again, and take care, and <laughs> lot of health. Tadeusz. Tadeusz Remus, <laughs> mhhelpline.com. Once again, congratulations on this initiative and best of luck. Thank you.